Okay, and I'm pleased to uh, we started the recording, and I'm pleased to greet you all on our second Ready for Net Zero webinar, Financing the Climate Transition. Uh, before we start the webinar, I would like to go through a few housekeeping rules with you. First of all, as I already said, uh, the webinar will be recorded. I hope you don't mind, but if you do, please just keep your camera turned off so that you are not on the recording. Uh, I, will I will share my screen first. Uh, if you need the, in do you see the screen? Great. If you need the interpretation, uh, please click on the round sign on the bottom of the Zoom. It's like a circle, uh, circle of shape and choose the language of your preference. Also press mute original audio. Uh, and of course, if you need any help and support, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, uh, finally, uh, if uh, the, the, the presentation uh, is on, please mute your microphone uh, and do not speak when our presenter is speaking. Uh, if you don't mind, turn on your camera so that we can see each other because it's always better when we can see faces on the webinars. Uh, if you have any questions, please either put it on the chat or raise your head so that we, uh, hands so that we don't interrupt our presenter while, while presenting. Uh, and also edit your name uh, to add institution and country code. So for UK, uh, for English say UK, for Croatian HR, for Hungarian HU, uh, and so on. And now I will give the word to Isabella, our project coordinator, who will introduce you to the Ready for Net Zero project. Isabella, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tena, for, for this uh, introduction and presenting uh, this, uh, this uh, housekeeping uh, rules uh, for uh, our webinar. In the meantime, I will try to um, share my screen and I hope you can uh, see the presentation. Uh, okay, thank you. Welcome also from, uh, from my side. Uh, and as uh, Tana mentioned, my name is Isabella Kuśnierz and I'm a project manager in the Association of uh, Polish Network Energy Cities. Uh, together with my colleagues from uh, Energia Club, uh, OER and uh, RGA, uh, and also the support of uh, Ecologic Institute, we are creating the consortium of Ready for Net Zero uh, project. And uh, under this project, uh, we meet uh, uh, here uh, during this uh, second uh, webinar uh, in the uh, series. Um, the, the title of uh, our uh, today's meeting is the uh, Financing the Climate uh, Transition. However, at first, I would like to uh, give you uh, some uh, deeper understanding of uh, our project and, and the background in the upcoming uh, slides. Mm. Yeah, climate change is uh, is something is a key challenge uh, that we are facing uh, today, and uh, we have to react uh, somehow. Uh, one of uh, the reaction uh, from the European uh, level is uh, striving for for the net neutrality uh, by uh, two thousand twenty. Um, most of you probably uh, heard about the climate uh, neutrality, uh, but what is it in uh, particular? Uh, climate neutrality uh, refers uh, to the idea of achieving net zero uh, greenhouse uh, gas uh, emissions by reducing and balancing those emissions. So there are equal or even uh, less uh, mm, that uh, get removed through the planet's natural absorption. Mm, the transition to, to, to this climate uh, neutral uh, society is from the one side uh, 
quite uh, urgent uh, challenge for us, uh, but from the other side, it's also a, an opportunity uh, to build uh, together a better uh, future for, uh, for us and for our uh, children. Um, in this process, uh, are involved all parts of society, uh, all uh, uh, economic sectors, and uh, uh, also uh, uh, administration uh, from the local level uh, uh, by uh, national one. Uh, however, the cities are in the front uh, of the fight with uh, with climate change, as uh, cities have uh, capacities and tools uh, to uh, act. Uh, they also have uh, a will to act, and uh, the cities are uh, closest to the uh, citizens, so they can offer them uh, the solution uh, that are. Uh, uh, environmentally and socially uh, friendly. Uh, so one of the key tools which are critical to to, uh, to drive this uh, this transformation um, with vision of climate neutrality uh, are local uh, term uh, climate natural uh, neutrality strategies. Uh, that are the the main topic of uh, of our uh, our project. So, uh, what are the uh, key uh, challenges regarding uh, regarding this process? Uh, firstly, uh, there is a limited staff uh, capacities and resources, also from the technical side, uh, the financial side, but also uh, when it comes to, to, to human resources. Um, we uh, identified also some knowledge gaps um, regarding uh, the setting and uh, implementing um, long-term visions and targets, uh, but also uh, Sometimes there is also a lack of technical uh, expertise uh, on how to translate this long-term planning into uh, some short and mid-term uh, concrete actions or, uh, or strategies. Uh, there is also a lack of uh, sufficient governance frameworks, uh, which could support uh, and support from, uh, from the national and regional level. Uh, but also um, trouble with uh, participation uh, process that could uh, uh, support uh, the process of designing and uh, implementing uh, of, uh, uh, of the strategies. Um, there is also a lack of access to, uh, to context-specific knowledge, uh, but also to uh, uh, good uh, practices, uh, the case studies, uh, and and tools uh, on how to, to build uh, capacities uh, um, within this uh, this uh, topic. Uh, so what we are doing uh, uh, with uh, uh, within the Ready for Net Zero project, uh, our main uh, goal is to support uh, small and medium sized cities in Poland, Romania, Hungary, and Croatia. Uh, in development and implementation of uh, 2050 climate neutrality uh, strategies, and how we do this, uh, uh, we can we are supporting them with uh, um, developing the capacity, knowledge, and uh, skills. Um, by also fostering uh, exchange and networking between uh, the munici municipalities involved uh, in our uh, actions uh, by elaborating uh, guidance uh, on how to develop ambitious uh, uh, local long-term climate strategies, uh, as well as a capacity development program uh by kickstarting concrete action in our uh, municipalities uh, in uh, for uh, for countries uh, and also by uh, disseminating and uh, the products and and results beyond uh, uh, those uh, pilot uh, municipalities uh to uh, 
to achieve uh, uh, our goal, uh, we uh, were following a step-by-step -step, uh, approach. Uh, our first step uh, is to develop the, the, the guidance um, titled uh, Developing Ambitious Local Long-Term Climate Neutral Strategies. And uh, I hope I can announce that uh, soon uh, I mean, uh, in the beginning of the next year, the guidance uh, in English and also in national languages will be uh, will be ready. Uh, will be shared with uh, with uh, uh, all our municipalities uh, and also beyond them. So uh, everyone uh, interested uh, in uh, in climate neutral strategies could. Um, go uh go to to this guidance uh as uh, you are uh in our uh webinar list let's say uh, we can also uh send uh, to all of you and uh, the message when uh when our guidance will be will be ready uh after this step, we have the step two um, regarding the uh, elaboration of uh, capacity development program. So we are a uh, webinar series uh, under which we, we met uh, today is uh, is a part of uh, of this uh, of this program. Uh, we also foreseen uh, the workshops uh, and concrete uh, uh, action in in our cities. Uh, and uh, at the end, uh, we will try to we will disseminate uh, our our results to to all uh, those uh, who are interested. Uh, also via online platform. Uh, I hope my colleague will be able to uh, to send you on the chat uh, in a minute uh, link to, to to our website where. Uh, there will be uh, all the uh, materials from our webinar series um, uh, in respective uh, sub pages. So uh, you will have uh, an access to, uh, to them. Uh, this is uh, all from from my uh, side uh, now. Uh, so uh, thank you, thank you all, and I would like uh, to uh, give the floor to Mr. Uh, Vladimir Sedon, uh, Sedon, our uh, our uh, speaker for today's uh, uh, webinar. Uh, he is a deputy managing director uh, in uh, Regera. Regera. Uh, he uh, coordinates uh, the imp uh, implementation of energy efficiency project. Uh, he has also worked uh, as energy uh, project evaluator for, for the European Commission. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shadon is an expert in uh, renewable energy sources and rational uh, use of uh, energy, but also in uh, GIS uh, modeling and so socioeconomic impact uh, analysis. So uh, thank you from uh, my side and I give the floor to our speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella, for, for the introduction. And thank you for this opportunity to participate and to give you this presentation. So hello, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. So can you see my presentation? It yes. should be now in, in full screen mode. OK. Uh, <clears throat> it's you. not in full screen. We can see the presentation mode. Uh, the so the slides on the left. Okay, just a moment. Now. Still not. Uh, just now it's okay. Moment. Now it's okay. Now it's full screen. Okay, yes. so I I had to close my my laptop and my camera, but uh, then well, please look at at the presentation. And my voice, and after the presentation, I will turn on my my camera uh, again. 
So, uh, yes, I would like to, uh, considering that the focus of the project is on cities and municipalities, I would like to share our experience as uh, Energy and Climate Agency in implementing ELENA projects. So ELENA is uh, a special facility of the European Investment Bank through which uh, cities, municipalities, uh, counties, regional local government, but also energy agencies and uh, uh, also including the private sector as well, can get financial support uh, to prepare investment projects. So uh, it's uh, Elena is financed under the, the Horizon program. So it's uh, under the, the jurisdiction of the European Commission, uh, but it's the European Investment Bank, which is also uh, the EU bank. And basically through Elena, uh, applicants can get 90% co-financing to prepare everything which is needed to start investment projects. The rules of the Elena facility are in some way uh, uh, much stricter than usual uh, Horizon or Life or Interreg or uh, EUKI or whatever projects through, uh, in which many of us have uh, participated and implemented in the sense that uh, once you get an Elena project, you have to realize the investment. If you don't realize the investment, you have to basically give the money back to the European Investment Bank. And uh, there is a, a certain leverage factor, a minimum is 20. So uh, if you get 1 million euros of technical assistance, the investment must be at least 20 million euros. So it's quite strict rules, but the Elena facility is a very, very good in our experience, excellent opportunity uh, to, to use. And uh, we have experience in implementing actually four Elena projects. I will present all, all of them in, in this presentation and give you some background and additional information. So let me start uh, in just a moment. Okay, it's working. Let me start with, with our first Elena project. It was uh, called New Light. It was about uh, reconstruction, retrofit of public lighting. In uh, uh, You will see 57 cities and municipalities. And... Uh, we like to present this project as a story on aggregation of these uh, projects. So bundling, aggregation, putting them all together. So the main facts of uh, the New Light project, sorry, it's okay. The main facts of uh, the New Light project. So uh, it started in uh, October, 2015, it's completed. It was completed in 2018. The duration, uh, the usual duration of uh, Elena project is 36 months. Although in, in some cases, when it's justified, you can get the prolongation, but the, the standard is three years. So the final beneficiaries of this project were 57 cities and municipalities in two counties, so regional authorities in, in Croatia. And the overall goal was to achieve at least 20 million euros of investment in retrofit of public lighting. The, the applicant, there can be only one applicant to Elena project. You cannot have a consortium applying and getting. So only one uh, entity can be uh, the, the applicant. And we as Regea were uh, uh, actually the applicant to, to this new light project. So we took the risk to achieve the investment and we provided support uh, to these 57 cities and municipalities which had to realize the, the investment. So the total project budget was uh, 700, 790,000 euros. The final uh, cost of the project was a little more than 700, 704,000 euros, as you can see. Uh, as I said, 90% uh, is the co-financing of Elena. Uh, this does not include any overheads. So the co-financing is not that good in comparison to some other EU projects. You have to ensure at least 10% of your own uh, co-financing, but it's it's doable. We did it uh, through our two uh, uh, founders. So we have four founders, the city of Zagreb, which is a capital of Croatia and has uh, both a city and county status and three neighboring counties. Two of them uh, were co-funding our uh, uh, activities through this 
Elna project. So Zagreb County, which is a cities and municipalities around the city of Zagreb, and Krapina Zagreb County. And the the third county, our founder is uh, Karlovac County. This was not uh, targeted in this uh, Elena project. So as I said, it's a project, it's a story about aggregation, about bundling. So the whole idea was to have many smaller uh, and medium cities and municipalities aggregated in one project. Uh, why this? Because Elena has a threshold. So basically the minimum uh, uh, investment which uh, you can aim at through an Elena project is 30 million euros, which is quite high, especially for a small medium city. You can uh, aggregate this investment in uh, many smaller, medium cities. It's not necessary that investment happens only in one city. And it's not really a fixed rule, this 30 million euros for smaller countries, it, it can be lowered. So it's, it's, let's say, negotiable. But the idea of the New Light project was to have 57 cities, municipalities in these two counties included in one project. And in that way to... Uh, standardize and make the whole process of uh, uh, procurement, of uh, negotiation, of uh, everything more efficient and more uh, effective for, for execution. So as I said, the duration was 36 months. We had basically three main phases of project implementation. The first phase was performing energy audits, so the inventory of uh, public lighting, because as you will see, this was uh, in quite poor shape at the start of, of the project. Then the second phase was preparing of model contracts to uh, for cities and, and municipalities to, to contract the, the retrofit of public lighting with, uh, with companies which are going to do that. So we prepared various models of contract design and build where you procure uh, both the project, the main project design. So the design phase and the construction phase in one contract, uh, the energy performance contracting, and we even preferred a full private, uh, public private partnership uh, contract. So cities could basically choose which model they would apply to get the reconstruction done. And then the last phase was uh, the launching, the, the running of uh, public procurement and the managing of, of all that. So some key challenges in implementing this project. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, well, the first challenge was to mobilize local authorities. And uh, actually before we apply to, to Elena, and as I said, the project started in October, 2015, we had like three years of preparatory activities to develop the project, to present the project, to uh, get our two counties to, to give us support, mobilize 57 cities and municipalities. As I said, the rules of Elena are such that if you don't realize investments, you have to repay the money back to European Investment Bank. Because of that, we signed bilateral contracts with each city municipality. Uh, in the contract, it was basically stated that we provide them uh, technical and uh, any other kind of assistance they need for free through Elena money. But if they don't realize the investment, they have to repay us the money which we have to repay back to the European Investment Bank. So it was kind of insurance for, for us. We wanted them really to, to take this uh, seriously. So the second challenge was, uh, which I mentioned, insufficient baseline data regarding uh, uh, public lighting, street lighting systems in uh, these cities and, and municipalities. We had to develop a special methodology for uh, energy audits, so how to collect uh, uh, these data. Uh, we had, we still kind of have rather undeveloped ESCO market in, in Croatia. So it was really uh, uh, very much needed that we do facilitation service. So to, to bring all of them uh, uh, aboard, to educate them, to motivate ESCO companies to uh, prepare their tenders and uh, to, to apply to the bidding to see what would be attractive for them. So it was really a long process to uh, build all this up. We had a challenge of low energy prices, which simply result in low, long payback periods. 
uh, in the brackets is the, the electricity price uh, in that time. Now we are in Croatia facing a similar challenge because for the last almost year and a half, we have a regulation of our government, which uh, um, basically regulates electricity and gas prices. So it's again, uh, this uh, lowers your phys financial feasibility of any energy efficiency or, or renewable energy sources uh, projects. Uh, we had at that time really very few examples of uh, projects implemented with uh, uh, advanced or uh, uh, innovative financial uh, mechanisms like EPC, like uh, PPP, even uh, with the design and build, which is not really an innovative financial mechanism, but there, there was really lack of experience in implementing such projects. So we had to explain, to, to again, motivate, to support cities to, to go in, in that. It was a, a question of uh, the models which they are going to use in public procurement. And how, how we uh, tackled what we did to address uh, these challenges. So for the challenge of energy audits, uh, of or lack of uh, uh, baseline data, as I said, uh, so we had to scan approximately 70,000 luminaires. So it's uh, quite a large number of uh, uh, luminaires which we had to gather data about. Uh, approximately 55% of the total Elena project costs was spent on that. So we subcontracted energy auditors, which went on the field and basically uh, scanned each uh, uh, luminaire, each uh, lamping post uh, uh, separately. We developed, for this, we developed a specialized software with uh, one of the leading JS companies in, in Croatia, uh, a software as a mobile uh, app. So each uh, uh, energy auditor, which we subcontracted, uh, was bound by contract to use the software. So we want really to get standardized data from them not uh, allowing them to, to have each own uh, their uh, way of collecting things and delivering uh, data because it would be really a mess. So they had to use this mobile app uh, through which they could choose various uh, features. And basically we uh, get standardized uh, data, which was then much easier to analyze and to put in one joint database because of this. Based on this collected data, we developed uh, action plans for public lighting reconstruction. For This was really custom made for each city and municipality, of course, because each city had a different configuration of public lighting. So in, in the action plan, there were all kinds of details uh, from the energy audits, but also financial, economic analysis, payback periods, investment costs, estimation, uh, estimated savings, Quite, quite. So I, I can hear someone else talking. Can you hear it? Should we ask someone to mute their microphones? Or maybe those who are hosts, you can please mute them. Yes, please. It's, it's not helping. Okay, thanks. Now it's good. So yes, we developed these action plans for each city municipality, which, which was custom made, and all of them were officially adopted by uh, city municipality councils. Uh, here you can see some uh, uh, screenshots from uh, the energy audit documents. So really detailed document, uh, which presents all relevant information about uh, street lighting systems in each of the 57 cities and municipalities in, in the project. Uh, the action plans, uh, you can see a sample here. So uh, again, really detailed information, uh, classification of uh, uh, streets, of roads, number of uh, uh, lighting posts, uh, their capacities, their consumption, the costs of uh, uh, operation and maintenance. So everything needed to decide on the uh, uh, amount of retrofit. So not all uh, uh, street lighting posts were, were retrofit in, in the 57 cities and municipalities. They each selected the uh, project uh, uh, scope. 
So uh, yes, the the next few challenges which we faced uh, uh, related to the tender process, the the reconstruction of public lighting, uh, how we addressed that. We prepared tender documentation. We provided legal advice to cities and municipalities. As I mentioned, we provided we prepared and provided them three types of uh, documentation. So the let's say standard design and build contract model where they procure one company to do the main project design and the construction, the retrofit phase. We prepared a uh, energy performance contracting model. We prepared a full public private partnership model. So they could choose, they could select which model best suits their uh, wishes. We supported them in obtaining uh, co-financing if this was uh, available. Uh, we provided extensive facilitation services uh, to develop the ESCO market. So in, in the hundreds meetings we uh, held with the uh, ESCO companies, with cities, uh, especially with cities and municipalities, because uh, we had to first, uh, well, prepare them for the project, negotiate, the energy audit process, uh, explain them the contract models, uh, part, uh, participate in the assemblies which adopted the action plans. We had to, of course, explain them and uh, uh, provide detailed explanation about the pro uh, procurement documentation, about the procurement process. They had many questions, comments. It was really, really an extensive uh, uh, negotiation process. And we had more than 30 minutes with the ESCO uh, companies, so the ESCO market players and financial institutions to basically explain the whole project and to uh, get their feedback on the conditions which we plan to put in the procurement. So to ensure that we don't get a situation that the city publishes a procurement and then nobody uh, applies so to the procurement because the conditions are too strict. Uh, some uh, numbers and figures from the New Light project. So uh, about 70% of the authorities basically choose the EPC, the Energy Performance Contracting or the ESCO model, uh, where cost, costs are covered from energy savings. About 30% of municipalities uh, choose the design and build uh, contract model. So the, PP, the full PPP public-private partnership model was not uh, uh, attractive to, to any of them. It was too too complex and too complicated, but the EPC is kind of a variant of, of that. So we have now good experience with implementing uh, street lighting retrofit with the, with the EPC model. So uh, let me then uh, uh, give you some more background about this EPC model because it's quite, uh, I think, important, interesting. Uh, for uh, cities, municipalities, for, for the public uh, sector. Uh, I believe some of you have some experience, but just to, to give you some, some more background. So EPC is short for Energy Performance Contracting, which basically is a model for uh, realizing, for implementing energy efficiency projects where the contractor, the private partner, the ESCO, energy service company, provides energy services uh, in the form of guaranteed energy savings. So the ESCO is the one which guarantees energy savings to, to, uh, to the client. The client can be public uh, entities, but it can also be private entities. And uh, in Croatia, in fact, we have much more EPC projects in the private uh, sector because private companies are... They they have an easier time deciding to to go into this model. So the energy service with the, which the ESCO company provides includes the development, design, implementation of energy efficiency measures that result in energy savings. So the private partner designs everything, implements. Uh, it can also the energy service can also include the financing of of this. This was the case in the in the new light project for the EPC projects. So uh, one important uh, aspect is uh, according to Eurostat treatment, uh, this is important for cities, municipalities, if the energy savings are larger than the costs 
or, or the fee which is payable to the ESCO company, then the investment can be treated as off balance. So it's not counted in public debt. This in Croatia, we have uh, uh, quite a lot of cities which uh, have approached the limit for public debt. And in Croatia, it's the Minister of Finance who puts this limit, and it's 20% of the uh 20 percent of, of of the budget and many cities are close to that limit so esco projects are uh, particularly interesting in in that regard so uh, the energy energy savings need to be reg uh, regularly monitored measured verified at minimum once a year otherwise it's not an epc contract and the guarantees of savings can be defined in different ways. So you could have a, a reduction of uh, fee if uh, the savings are not achieved. Uh, you can have uh, the private partner giving you bank guarantees, when, which then you use to, to get your money back is if the savings are achieved. So it's really uh, negotiable. And usually uh, the contract has a clause that if the energy savings uh, get above uh, guaranteed levels, then they are shared between the ESCOs and the client. And this, uh, in addition, motivates the ESCOs to really aim for uh, as much as possible high energy savings. So an example uh, from uh, uh, EPC in street lighting and the city of Zaprasic in Croatia was actually part of the new light project. You can see the main data here. So more than uh, 4,200 luminaires were changed, modernized. Uh, the CAPEX, 1.7 million euros, the energy consumption before, after, so the energy savings, the fee payable, so the energy savings in energy and uh, in uh, uh, euros are actually larger than, than the uh, fee which the city has to pay uh, to the company. These are yearly uh, savings. Uh, and now a few words about the project, which is implementation, which we are coordinating, which is very much uh, in connection with, with all this, with the EPC in street lighting. The project is called Smart EPC. So basically, it's a, a project focused on combination of energy and non-energy services with the EPC to make it more attractive. Uh, the answer to this question is yes, this can be done and we are actually doing it. You have the link to the project website here. You have here the basic information of the project. So we are the coordinator. We have 30 project partners and we have five pilot cities which are doing this. So the main objective is to uh, enable the transition of local public authorities to smart, sustainable cities by using uh, existing energy efficiency services, but also combining them with smart uh, uh, concepts. So when I say smart concepts, uh, basically we are talking about combination under a single contract of reconstruction and the modernization of public lighting with EPC, but also uh, non-energy services like smart city applications, 5G communication, e-charging, so all this can be bundled in, in one contract. And we have, in this smart EPC project, we have prepared, a stand, again, standardized uh, set of documents, the, the contracts, the uh, analysis, the action plan, the Excel tool for calculating energy savings. So it's all available uh, on, the, on the, the project website, which is in, in my presentation. So uh, our view of the Elena facility based on this first project, which we successfully completed, so the new light project, uh, basically it's an excellent opportunity to use for financing technical assistance. So Elena, Elena projects are all about technical assistance for investments. You have a special uh, part of uh, life calls, which is called PDA, Project Development Assistance. Uh, colloquially, it's called Small Elena. You can also apply to that. 
in in this applica in in the application you can uh, uh, have a consortium so not just one applicant like uh, elena uh, it's usually targeted to one country so the consortium can be for for one country only and you get the financing with the same condition as elena project so you have to uh, realize the investment we uh, are currently coordinating one life pda project uh, I will not present it here, but just to mention it briefly, it's about uh, uh, supporting the district heating companies in Croatia. And we have 98% of the total district heating company systems in, in Croatia in terms of customers in, in this project. We are supporting them to achieve investments for, to modernize their district heating systems in Croatian cities and municipalities through, through this live PDA. So you can get technical assistance for your investment projects either through Elena for bigger projects or through live PDA for smaller projects. The, the advantage of Elena is that you don't have a deadline for a project application. It's an always open call, so you can apply anytime you want. And the last information from the European Investment Bank is that they still have quite a lot of financing money available. So if you have a good investment opportunity, which is big enough, and if you apply to, to Elena, you have really, really good chances to, to get the, the, the project. So what uh, Elena projects are good for, what we use it for, the, for in, in Regea through this new light project. So we built very much our in-house capacity. Uh, for many things, for sustaining facilitation service, for providing assistance to cities and municipalities. We then use this capacity for other bigger projects, which I will present shortly. And we built our network of external experts, which is also very important if you uh, need to implement big investment projects. You, you cannot, this is our experience, you cannot have all the expertise in-house. It's simply not feasible. So you have to, to use subcontractors. So our second Elena project, uh, which uh, was called Republic, the applicant of this project was actually the city of Zagreb, which, as I mentioned, is one of our founders. We were providing uh, uh, technical support to, to the city. The main project objective was, again, retrofit of street lighting. So we chose street lighting as a topic because it's the simplest uh, uh, energy efficiency project uh, type which you can uh, implement so compared to energy retrofit of buildings or uh, installation of renewable energy sources. So the, the retrofit of street lighting is really the simplest uh, one. If, if you do, didn't do it as a city and municipality, our advice is that you first focus on, on that. So very briefly, the... Republic project, the main facts, it started in 2018, uh, lasted, we actually get 12 month prolongation for, for that project, so it lasted 48 months. The overall goal was minimum 30 million euros of investment exclusively in public lighting in the city of Zagreb. Total project budget was 2 million euros, 90% co-financing the project timeline. Uh, so we prepared, uh, we supported the city to prepare the tenders, uh, their fund, final execution. We supported them to uh, identify the ideal project scope in terms of number of luminaires, uh, in terms of capex. This is the advisory services which we provided, so technical uh implement uh, supporting uh, to to revise energy audits to analyze data we did feasibility studies cost benefit analysis uh, prepared tender documentation legal advisory so everything which the city needed to to run to implement this project it was done in three phases uh, first the development of the action plan then uh, main project designs financing uh, models and the last phase was public procurement and the scope of the project, about 40% of the existing luminaires in the city of Zagreb was uh, targeted as a, a scope. Then the third Elena project, which I will present, is uh, this is still ongoing. We are actually the applicant. So again, it's Regea who uh, faces the risk to, to having to repay back the money to EIB if the investment is not uh, realized. Uh, the project name is PV Max. It's about investment in photovoltaic systems in Croatia. 
So a short overview of this project, uh, again, an Elena project, uh, it started in July 2021. So we still have uh, seven, eight months to, to implement the project. We'll probably ask for a prolongation. As I said, this is not uh, uh, unusual and it's quite quite normal that you, you can get it because it's not really simple to implement investment projects in, in the end. Total project budget is all, almost 2 million euros. So the main goal is to achieve investment in PVs in public, uh, in buildings or integrated systems and energy efficiency electricity measures of over 80 million euros. So uh, standalone PV uh, systems not integrated in buildings are not um, uh, are not eligible for Elena co-financing. Just my uh, you have to to mind that. So a very short overview of uh, status of PVs in in Croatia. Uh, why focus on PVs and uh, why we apply to this Elena? And in each application for an Elena project like other EU projects, you have to provide the background, you have to provide the justification why you need LNA money to, to actually achieve the investment. So this is the situation in Croatia regarding PV installations. If we look at the installed uh, capacity per capita, we are among the lowest in, in the EU. Unfortunately, we like to say that we have quite a big potential for improvement. But basically, looking at uh, uh, Slovenia, looking at Austria, we have almost six times uh, uh, less uh, watts per capita than Slovenia, almost 10 times, nine, 10 times less than Austria. We have over 20 times less than the Netherlands. This is data uh, from end of 2022 from the photovoltaic barometer, which is publication available on, on the internet. So uh, basically, considering the fact that PVs are financially feasible even without subsidies nowadays because uh, the, there has been really a drastic decrease in uh, investment costs this indicates a quite clear market failure in, in Croatia and at the time when, when we applied for this Elna project we were quite able to argue that the market failure includes legal barriers and lack of, of project pipeline so we focused uh, mostly on this lack of project pipeline and we prepared as you will see quite a strong uh, project pipeline in, in this Selena project so what we did in this uh, PV max uh, uh, project uh, almost as soon as the project started as i said in july but from 1st september uh, 2021 until end of december 2022 we had open a public call so anyone from the public sector or private sector across Croatia could apply, not just the counties and cities which we cover as Regea, but we decided to go for a national Elena and the EIB approved that. So uh, clients could get uh, technical uh, assistance, uh, they could get uh, uh, financial assistance, uh, it was uh, mostly targeted for building owners and for investors in PV uh, building integrated systems, as I said, anywhere in, in Croatia. So the assistance was free of charge for all who applied to the public call, but with the condition that investment must be realized or at least started for the public sector. As I said, this was the condition in the bilateral contracts which we signed with cities and municipalities included in the new light project. This is a guarantee for us as Elena applicant to actually being able to achieve the investment. If a client gets technical assistance from us free of charge, uh, the investment must be realized. Otherwise, this client uh, basically must repay the money back to us because we have to repay the, the money back to Elena. So we wanted really uh, serious investors to, to get the technical assistance. And the assistance includes all necessary preparatory activities, so the technical consulting, financial consulting, so how to realize the investment, legal consulting, everything which is needed to achieve the investment in PV uh, projects. So uh, what we have achieved so far in the PV Max project are uh, results through uh, and uh, implementation uh, uh, outcomes. Uh, so basically, so far we have prepared 
a very big pipeline of over 300 projects, over 100 megawatts in total, all through this public call. We have signed memorandums of understanding with all clients with the conditions I already mentioned. So they have to realize the investment. We have so far realized uh, investments in uh, 26.5 megawatts, 106 investments. So we are quite confident that we will achieve the uh, needed investment in, in the PVMAX project. Also through this project, we, uh, well, we prepared for the city of Zagreb and we uh, supported them to adopt uh, a, a special program aiming at uh, uh, installing PV uh, systems on buildings, the so-called Zagreb Solar Roofs program. 2022-2024, so it was adopted in October 2021. Uh, from uh, it was officially adopted by the city assembly of the city of Zagreb. The main goal is to have 50, at least 50 megawatts of building integrated PVs on all building types, public, residential, commercial, and using all financial models. So PPAs. I will explain what PPAs are in 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 a moment. Uh, premium price, uh, co-financing, uh, energy community, so everything uh, is is included. We we don't restrict Elena, and we don't restrict any uh, uh, way of financing the, the the project. And this program from the city of Zagre was really uh, a key uh, uh, strategic document, which really kickstarted the 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 whole process. So from uh, uh, June uh, 2021, we have a new city administration, which is very much supportive in uh, green energy projects. And this was one of the, as I said, key strategic documents. And we are very much, uh, uh, we have prepared quite a lot of uh, projects. Uh, they are being implemented and we have really good, good results. And we are confident that by the end of 2024, we will reach most, if not all of the goals in, in this document which is quite ambitious so uh just to give you an overview of uh, uh, the uh, activities and the, the approach which we took to implement all these investments so we focused very much uh, uh, our, our time and effort on fine tuning and testing of uh, details of contract documentation uh, preparing again different model uh, contracts for the design and build, design build finance, PPA. Uh, all these models really put the, the clients in the first place. So we uh, developed the contracts so that the clients are, so to say, protected. They, they don't get in a, this favorable uh, position situation. We insisted in many cases, in many aspects and uh, on the above standard practice in technical aspects, technical implementation of PV systems. So this includes a quite high level uh, minimum technical requirements for all components of these PV systems. We adopted, we uh, in all projects which we implemented through PVMAX, we adopted a higher uh, technical design requirement for uh, fire safety than minimum in Croatia. We identified the Slovenian technical design requirements as uh, uh, better, and uh, we then uh, there is basically no condition which forces you not uh, to go to the minimum technical requirement. Of course, you're free to 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 go higher. So we. Uh, believe that this this is really a good good practice especially when fire safety is is concerned so all our projects which we developed and supported through pv max included uh the main project designs included static analysis of the roof so is the roof strong enough to um, hold pv system uh fair fire safety measures and a very big focus on proper operation and maintenance because it's not just installing the PV system. It looks like you put it on the roof and then you, you're free of worries, but it's not, it's not like that. You have to properly operate and maintain the, the PV system. And we uh, very much focus, we try to create new pathways in cooperation. So we assisted clients, especially the private sector, which had uh, such opportunities in application of uh, different available and national and new funds. Uh, 
we analyzed uh, 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 options of coupling PV systems, uh, PV installation with battery storage systems, with heat pumps, heat pumps, with uh, electro vehicle chargers. We focused on project aggregation, which is uh, again one of the strategic options which we advocate. We analyzed the option of having uh, virtual power plants. So we really use this project to uh, develop, to test all kinds of uh, models and uh, mechanisms. Uh, some really uh, uh, detailed uh, uh, data about few projects which we implemented. So our first PPA, Power Purchase Agreement, uh, example was the county hospital of Brachak, so 500 kilowatts of PV system. You can see it here in, in the photo. Uh, you can uh, he see here the, the details, uh, the yearly production, the PP contract, PPA contract duration, which is 10 years. So the hospital gets a lower price of electricity without having to pay anything. So it's the private partner who covers covered all the investment. After 10 years, all the equipment uh, uh, becomes property of the hospital. And uh, in that time, the hospital will have considerable energy savings. During the duration of the contract, the savings are not that big. But as I said, the hospital has not even invested one euro in, in the uh, PV system. So based on this model, we also realized other examples. Uh, hospitals are particularly suitable because they have quite large energy consumption. And this is always good for PV systems because they can consume everything which the PV system produces. In financial terms, this is the best, by far the best option. So you don't put anything in, in the grid. Uh, we also have uh, uh, quite a large number of projects based on the PPA model in progress. The city of Zagreb has uh, published a tender. It was closed on the 16th of November, so uh, just uh, six, uh, five days ago, uh, for uh, PPA uh, PV systems on 16 uh, public buildings owned by the city of Zagreb in total one point five megawatts and actually we the city received three three offers three uh, bits from private companies and the selection process in is ongoing so we are confident that this this will also be implemented uh crap in zagari county one of our founders will launch very soon uh aggregated public tender for ppa contract we have uh, supported croatian radio television in in this process uh, university hospital of uh, rebro in, in zagreb which is a national institution so we are we have really a good long list of uh, good examples so to give you a background on this ppa model so it's short of power purchase agreement it's an, in essence, it's procurement of goods, so of electricity. So as a public partner, it can be also private, but we are focused on, uh, currently mostly on, on uh, public partners. So public partner produce, procures, so buys electricity from a, pr a private uh, partner. There are various models of PPA, they are evolving. There is a distinction on, in off-site PPA and on-site PPA. Basically, on-site is if the PV system is put on the roof of the building or on nearby parking lot or somewhere near, and the electricity is mostly used by the building. Off-site is if it's put somewhere uh, away from a building and it has to use the electricity grid to get the electricity to, to the building. So why use the PPA model in comparison with the traditional model where the, the client simply buys the, the PV system? Uh, well, here you have a, a number of questions which uh, has to be answered to, to get which uh, model you're going to use. So uh, does the client know how to manage or maintain PV power plant? If the answer is no, then the PPA is better option because the private partner is the one who manages and operates and maintains the PV plan. Uh, does the public part, does the client or the public partner know how to monitor production, how to know when PV models are not working? If the answer is no, again, PPA is uh, the better option. Uh, what about management of equipment and uh, guarantees? 
in in the PPA model is in the interest of the pub or the private partners, so the PPA provider, to get the best value per de delivered kilowatt hours of el uh, electricity. So uh, the private partner is very much focused on efficient design, orientation, uh, optimum design, optimization of installed power. Uh, to put the best uh, inverters, microinverters for more efficient production. So everything because the, uh, the private partner is selling kilowatt hours. It's not uh, uh, selling anything else. So the, the optimization of this is all in the domain of the private partner in the PPA contract. Uh, so yes, the client pays uh, on euro per kilowatt hour delivered. The client does not pay uh, for the investment, actually. So it's payment on performance basis. And uh, in the end, it, it all comes down to, to risk. So what are the risks and who takes the, the risks? So, for example, who uh, takes care of the optimum design of uh, the system? So if it's too small or too big, it's not good enough. Uh, who takes care on... Uh, uh, optimal uh, uh, operation maintenance the duration of the contract basically you you also have to see as client if the duration of the the ppa contract is uh, for example 10 years and the, your uh, 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 duration of uh, uh, or uh, how long the inverters are going to last if they broke down in the 11th year Obviously, you will not sign the contract for ten years, but you will you will look for for a longer duration. And the indexation usually the price of electricity in a PPA contract is fixed. It can be indexed, but basically, you as client are not in the situ on the situation that you buy electricity uh, from the market. So, if the price of electricity goes up on the market, you are protected against that because you you have signed a long uh, term. 10, 15, 20 years uh, contract with the, the private uh, partner who provides electricity at a, at a fixed price. Uh, so the general concept of uh, implementation of PPAs in uh, uh, renewable energy sources, so the building owner gives rights to the PPA pro uh, provider, producer, to build a uh, PV plant on his property. The PPA provider designs, finances, installs, maintains, operates the PV power plant and delivers energy to the consumer. The consumer pays for the delivered energy with guarantee of origin if uh, needed for uh, the kilowatt hour delivered. And after the PPA contract ends, the power plant, the ownership of the equipment of the power plant is transferred to the client without any costs or predefined price. So this is really PPAs in, in a nutshell in the way we are implementing them. And all of our projects, which I shown before, were implemented through this, uh, these uh, general rules. Uh, so now a few words about the energy info center which the city of Zagreb developed. Uh, we supported them in, in that. Uh, again, you have the uh, web address here in, in the top of this slide. It's in Croatian, uh, I'm afraid. It's, it's mostly for citizens of city of Zagreb. But basically on this energy info center, citizens have uh, so far uh, uh, at the moment three uh, applications, three tools. Uh, one of them is the energy atlas, atlas or, or energy uh, chart of the city of Zagreb where they can see uh, consumption uh, of energy, of electricity, of uh, gas, of heat, of water, for various parts of the city. So just to get, uh, uh, this could be useful information in, in city planning. Uh, citizens can get information about uh, current status of energy retrofit of public buildings. And they can use the tool, a tool for uh, analyzing, for preparing a PV plant for on their uh, household, on a, a house or multi-apartment multi uh, building. So this tool was developed by, by us and uh, one of the leading IT companies in, in Croatia. It's based on GIS modeling, it's based on a 3D map of the city of Zagreb. So each building is uh, 
uh, modeled as a, a, a real building with roof area, roof inclination, roof orientation. Uh, basically, uh, uh, citizens can select their buildings on the map, or they can type address uh, in on the on the application. Uh, based on the three D model, the the tool, the the, the program uh, then takes the data uh, about the area of the roof, about the usable area of the roof for installation of PV system. Uh, the the, the the client, the user of this tool, then enters data about consumption of electricity on a monthly or yearly basis. And based on that, the tool calculates the optimum uh, capacity of the PV system and uh, calculates the uh, production per month. This is the, the, the chart at the bottom uh, right of uh, my presentation. So it's production of uh, electricity per month, it's consum consumption of electricity per month, which is what the user entered, and provides some basic financial information like savings, uh, financial energy savings, financial savings, and simple payback uh, periods. So it's quite a handy tool to quickly analyze the, the potential and uh, to decide whether to uh, to go in, in further and more detailed analysis to install PV on uh, households. And the last Selena project, which I'm going to present, uh, it's really the most recent one. It's called Zagreen. So it's uh, focused exclusively on uh, retrofit of public buildings in uh, the city of Zagreb. The city of Zagreb is the applicant. We uh, are, uh, again, a technical experts providing the city with uh, uh, support. The project started in May this year. Uh, again, uh, the nominal duration 36 months. Uh, the targets you can see here, so we are aiming to achieve at least 85 million euros of investment in building retrofit, in PV systems, uh, approximately 50, 50 buildings. You can see here the uh, retrofitted area which we are aiming at, the savings, the renewable production. We also uh, will install in these systems building uh, energy management systems in the buildings. Uh, the technical assistance, the total uh, budget of the LNA project is 2.7 million euros. And as I said, the applicant, the final beneficiary is the city of Zagreb. So uh, we are aiming for deep building at retrofit. Uh, for this, we will prepare uh, feasibility studies, uh, detailed revision of existing energy audits, documentation, preparation of energy, uh, main project designs. And this is the, the biggest part of the project budget. So the city will subcontract uh, main project designers. Uh, feasibility studies for the EPC model, and preparation of PV uh, uh, systems on, on buildings as, as well. So the, the whole package in retrofitting uh, public buildings in, in the city of Zagreb. And basically you can see here uh, the first, the, the, the outline of uh, uh, project uh, um, implementation. So uh, three years, uh, you know, we uh, have already developed the guidelines for for uh, implementation of energy retrofit of public buildings, which the city of Zagreb has uh, included in, in all their uh, preparation of main project designs. So all main project designers get these guidelines and uh, they have to prepare the, the project designs based, based on that. And we are again uh, aiming at uh, higher than minimum standards of uh, uh, building retrofit. As I said, we are aiming at deep uh, building retrofit. So uh, yeah, you can see here all the, the details about uh, the plan of uh, project implementation. So prepar preparation of uh, documentation, uh, TORs for each building uh, made in accordance with the, the Green Deal building design uh, guidelines, which I mentioned, the preparation of uh, main project design, the analysis of uh, potential solutions, uh, choosing the, the optimum one, and continuous monitoring, monitoring and process management. And with this, uh, I will end my, my presentation. I hope you, you found the information 
uh, interesting and uh, of course i'm open to any questions you might have thank you Are there any questions? Yeah, we have something in the chat. What is the approach of Zagreb City in regards to involving citizens and relevant stakeholders in the co-design and co-implementation of local climate and energy strategies? And how is the integration of actions related to climate and clean energy transition achieved in practice? Okay, that's quite quite broad question uh basically the city of zagreb has uh adopted its uh secup so sustainable energy and climate action plan uh and in the preparation of this citizens uh, uh were involved because uh each such strategic document has to undergo a public consultation process so this this is one uh uh one way to to involve citizens but uh, the the city of zagreb uh, aims to involve citizens not just as uh, stakeholders in co-designing strategic documents one of the ambition of the city of zagreb is to involve citizens and co-investors in energy projects i haven't mentioned this in in detail but basically uh, we are aiming to include citizens uh, for now as co-investors in, in PV plants, where uh, we are looking at the really good example of uh, the city of Vienna, where they have achieved really good results. Basically, uh, it's a sort of a sell and uh, sell and lease back model. So uh, uh, a city company invests in the PV system and then sells. Uh, uh, this to, to citizens who can uh, um, basically they can get a guaranteed rate of return on, on their investment from this uh, PV system. So th this is one of the uh, models which the city of Zagreb is currently developing and uh, probably will, will use to attract citizens as investors. So as I said, it's, it's much higher ambition to include citizens, not just as a uh, 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 it's important to include them as stakeholders in developing strategic documentation, but this is much higher uh, involvement. This is this is the ambition of uh, City of Zagreb. Thank you, Velimir. Uh, the next one is uh, which renewable energy source does the City of Zagreb use? Well, as I mentioned, PVs. They are using uh, heat pumps. Uh, in the City of Zagreb, there is a district heating system and it's operated by a national uh, energy utility company HEP Hrvatska elektroprivreda which has a special subsidiary for uh, heat HEP Toplinarstvo and uh, basically all buildings are connected to to the district heating system so it's, it's it's a high efficiency uh, uh, district heating system uh it is operated on natural gas but all buildings can use this as a, a requirement for nzeb near zero energy building uh, uh, standard there is some geothermal uh, potential in in the city of zagreb this is not this is only sporadically used in some swimming pools and uh, uh, sport facilities it's not utilized in, in full but so far, the, the dominant uh, renewable energy uh, is uh, uh, definitely uh, PVs. Thank you. The third one is a bit longer. Uh, what is the main source of funding for climate projects, climate change mitigation and or adaptation, energy transition, etc.? What is the per, uh, percentage of non-refundable EU grants? Are non-reimbursable uh, EU funds investments uh, predominant? Does City of Zagreb have a percentage of the local budget or a fixed amount available uh, to finance environmental projects? That's a lot of questions. Uh, well, uh, uh, what sources are available? It's it's different for climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation. It's really a completely different 
uh, playing field when you're talking about financing because for mitigation and it's this is energy efficiency and renewables you can use financial mechanisms uh, mechanisms models which i mentioned in in this presentation so epcs or ppas or things like that you can include private partners these these projects could be financially feasible even without any subsidies some of them are for example the ppa project which i presented on hospitals, they did not get any grants. And the private partner invested everything. The hospitals got cheaper electricity than from the grid without any euro of investment. This is possible for climate mitigation projects. For climate adaptation, it's not possible because obviously in adaptation, you don't achieve any energy savings or production of renewables. So for climate adaptation, I would say it's all grants and, and public money, mostly. Regarding the, the further questions, what percentage uh, is uh, available? Well, this really depends on the, the program where you're aiming at. Uh, we all have, uh, as EU members, access to European uh, strategic and uh, investment funding. So the, the structural funds, the cohesion funds, uh, for details so, uh, regarding your your country, well, you have to, to consult your ministries and your your operational programs. But it's it's all pre predefined already. So uh, I I I don't have these numbers in in my head. Sorry, sorry about that. But uh, and uh, does Zitiozar has a percentage of local budget or fixed amount of it? Uh, well. The, uh, the city budget, uh, the, no, they don't have a fixed uh, uh, amount or percentage. In the city budget, there are euros dedicated explicitly to uh, energy efficiency projects, to renewable projects, uh, things like that. But th they are not expressed in percentages or, or uh, anything similar. I believe you have answered the next question, but let's say it again. Uh, what are the main sources of funding used by cities of Zagreb for renewable energy? Well, uh, in addition to what I uh, said, the city of Zagreb is in the uh, final phase of negotiation uh, with the European Investment Bank to get a framework loan. So in addition to providing Elena support, the EIB also provides uh, loans, obviously they're a bank, to, to the public sector. And uh, the, the framework loan, which the city of Zagreb is negotiating, is very suitable because it has a grace period of five years. It has a rather low uh, 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 interest rate. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word in English. Rather low interest rate, uh, um, uh, lower than any commercial bank in Croatia can can offer. So it's really good conditions for impl uh, implementing uh, big investment uh, in in uh, energy efficiency projects. It's uh, I think the minimum uh, investment is uh, on the order of. 50 something million euros you have the details uh, on the web page of european investment bank but the city of zagreb uh, is aiming at investment of, of uh, over 400 million euros through through this uh, framework loan thank you this one is interesting what does uh, city of zagreb's heating and cooling strategy look like uh yeah well uh, the city of zagreb does not have dedicated heating and cooling strategy as i said they have a secup so sustainable energy and climate action plan where some measures are targeting uh, the heating and cooling system but as i mentioned there, there is a district heating system in, in zagreb they cover 35 something 35 40 percent of the the total customers uh most of the others are on natural gas or electricity and again some okay uh, now you're muted Velimir. okay someone someone muted me <laughs> uh, so uh what what was the last thing which which you heard I, I talked about the, the district heating system in the city of Zagreb. Yes. 
So that's owned by by national uh, utility. So it's not under control of the city of Zagreb. It's it's uh, it wouldn't make sense much sense for the city of Zagreb to develop a strategy for uh, a national utility how for them how to run the DC heating. But the city is involved in 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 that as well. But uh, the as I said, about for thirty five to forty percent of customers in uh, city of Zagreb are connected to this DC heating system. Uh, uh, the rest is mostly natural gas, electricity, uh, very few heating oil, and very few biomass. Uh, but but that's mostly it. The city owns the natural gas supply company, and this company is currently in a let's say restructuring phase, and they're developing their strategy how to get out of of uh, natural gas. But uh, we still don't have. Uh, uh, completely clear picture uh, on on that. Thank you. The next question is said for the city of Zagreb. I think it's a better question for you actually. What solutions do you propose for transforming po uh, polluting and inefficient energy into green energy? Well, this this is a rather general question. Uh, well, the the general answer would be the solutions which I presented in in the presentation. So if if uh, if the question can be more specific, I can provide a more specific answer. But basically, it's energy efficiency and renewable energy sources. And the second one is similar. What are the most efficient technical solutions for reducing energy consumption in public buildings such as schools? Uh, you have to address two parts. One is the energy retrofit of the building, which is uh, the construction part. So uh, installing new installation, new windows, uh, uh, heating, uh, ventilation, cooling system, uh, everything. Uh, the second one is measurement of uh, energy consumption, measurement of indoor quality. So at what temperature, at what CO2 levels, uh, what, what is the indoor quality of the rooms in, in the building? And basically through that, you have to change the behavior of building users. So one without, uh, if you just do the, the energy retrofit of building and you don't uh, uh, address the change of behavior, our experience shows that the savings are, will not be uh, uh, as planned. Because, for example, just looking at the main project design, you do the energy retrofit of buildings or the building. The main project design tells you that the savings should be like 60%. And then you start operate the building and you achieve savings of 30%. And looking at why this is the case, because you didn't address the, the behavior of building users. So they think usually when the building is retrofitted, okay, now we can turn on, turn up the, the heating. We can, uh, because the building is retrofitted, we don't have to uh, take care of uh, uh, our behavior so, so strictly as, as before. And this is, this is technically, it's called the rebound effect. And it's a known fact. Uh, after uh, investing in energy retrofit of buildings. So you really have to focus on both aspects. Great, thank you. And if there's no more questions in the audience, we have one more question left. Uh, what were the main obstacles incurred and what were the solutions in the city approach to implementing climate neutrality strategies? Well, the main obstacles are the the once we already heard even in, in the introductory presentation by, by Isabella, so lack of knowledge, lack of capacity, lack of education, uh, lack of knowledge re related to many parts of the, the uh, implementation of these projects. So not just technical, but financial, but uh, uh, if it's a, a project uh, regarding uh, a wider public reach, then you, you have to educate the public and uh, everything. But so generally, lack of knowledge, awareness, uh, a lack of uh, uh, financing, for example, uh, uh, a lack of well-structured financing, I would say. For example, in, in Croatia, uh, one uh, obstacle we are facing is that... Uh, in one way, mo many of our cities and municipalities have become what, what we 
are sometimes called uh, grant junkies. So they're all waiting for grant subsidies, which our ministry runs, if we're talking about energy retrofit of buildings, uh, once every two years or something. And in the meantime, uh, uh, very little uh, energy retrofit of buildings happen because everybody is waiting for these subsidies. Uh, then when the subsidies are uh, uh, out, uh, everybody applies to them, not everybody gets them. And uh, the construction industry is facing big challenges how to reconstruct uh, a, a large number of buildings in a short time because you wait two years for subsidies, then you give subsidies, and then you have like four months to, to do all the retrofit instead of doing it in uh, three years or, or something. So. So uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I said the city of Zagreb decided to go into the framework loan uh, option. So they will take a, a rather favorable loan of a, ladder, a, ra a rather large amount, and they will be in charge to, to uh, de develop and to launch retrofit of their buildings. And this will not be done all buildings at once, but it will be done gradually. So we believe this will result in uh, better offers from construction companies, uh, uh, better quality of work. So there, there will not be so much pressure on, on uh, anybody in, in this way. So th those are some of the main obstacles which, which I mentioned, but... Thank you, Vladimir, so, both for your interesting presentation and for your additional answers. Uh, I don't know if there are some more questions from the audience. If not, I would like to thank you all for participating in the webinar. Our next webinar will be on uh, January 9th. And here I also invite you to participate in our next webinar. We will, of course, uh, promote it uh, via our websites and social media. So you will, be, you will see both the topic, the date, and the time of the webinar additionally. And thank you, everyone, everyone once more. And see you in January. I don't know if my partners have something additional to say. Great. Then I will say bye to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.